Hello and welcome to this week's Lunch Break Mentoring Moments. Thank you all so much for joining me today and thank you all so much for your questions that you've been sending me. This is where I answer your questions with a ton of value tips and tricks. So welcome you guys. We're going to get right into it today. Our first question is from Obina. Obina says, Hi Smita, I have a small specialty store and I've recently started selling on Shopify. How do I market my Shopify site? Now, Obina, congratulations. I think it's a big step that you have taken uh, to market online. I'm sure you've done all of your unit economics and you're sure this is the thing. And yay, congratulations. Now, um, I see that from your little background that you sent me that you're in the fitness industry and that you have done your basic marketing of your website. So you've told your friends and family, you've asked them to share it. You've done a little bit of ads. So that's great. The two ways that I'm going to tell you today, Obina, is more to really uh, target your direct audience. So what I mean by that is that the products that you're selling, I'm sure it can cater to a wide variety of audiences, but I would suggest pick one or two very specific audiences. So for example, uh, you're in the fitness industry, perhaps it's CrossFit, um, you know, uh, trainers, or perhaps it's, it's people that do CrossFit. Now find those communities online that have these people where your target audience is hanging out. So for example, if it's Facebook, find the Facebook groups where your audience is hanging out and get involved with it. Don't just go in there and, and you know, throw in a, a set of ads and say, hey, I have this product and tell me who wants to buy it. It's never going to work. But you need to genuinely, authentically build a uh, active presence. So give back value. So, you know, a lot of times when, it, when we're in a particular niche, we think that Everybody knows, uh, you know, uh, everything about that particular niche. So like, for example, if I cross, uh, if I'm a CrossFit person, um, you would imagine that, oh, you know what? She knows everything. But or if I'm a runner, you'd imagine that I would know everything about running. But I don't. There are so many things that I still go back and I research and I do. So when we're in that niche, we assume that everybody else knows everything about it. And so since we don't, what you can do is really go in there and answer the questions that people are asking. Provide value. Tell people that you know what you're talking about. The fact that you have these products, you know A to Z everything about it. So go in there, add a lot of value, be very active. Also give back. That's a big thing. You want to genuinely tell, show them, not tell them, show them that you genuinely care. And one of the ways to do that is to, you know, go into the conferences or the local meetups and give back to them because that will really make them uh, see that you care. Now, once you're able to do this also is where you can target your Facebook ads directly to these communities because you know that's where they're hanging out. So really this community, getting involved with it is really going to help you, Abina, try it. And then you'll get to a point where people will be asking you, hey, can you tell me, you know, can you send me the link to your product and stuff like that? And it'll really work. Um, the other way is to do influencer marketing. So to give you a quick a little background is to find, I would suggest, find, start off, since you're just starting off again, start with micro influencers. What that means is find influencers that are in your community or in your, um, even in your neighborhood or, you know, in your state um, who really have a following in that area. It's hard to reach out to influencers that have like millions and millions of followers since you're just starting out. Find your, but there are tons and tons of smaller micro influencers. So find these influencers and find out what their need is. Now you can't just go in and say, hey, Mr. So-and-so or Miss So-and-so, can you please promote my product? That's not going to work. So find what they need, fulfill their need and have them promote your product. Now what's happening is number one, you're helping them because you're fulfilling their need. And also it could be, uh, and also it's opening you up to so many other people that is really, you know, that would be interested in your product. So instead of you sending ads and spending money on ads where you're targeting each specific customer that you're looking for, 
Here, you have a whole platform of customers that are out there because of this influencer and you're able to target them directly. So try that. I think both of them will really work, Obina, and especially for a product-based business, it really helps to do that. Our second question is from Stephanie. Stephanie says, Hi, Smita. I am a vet and I have a clinic. A few local magazines want me to do an advertorial. Should I? Hi, Stephanie. I know you're watching. So thank you so much. And um, Stephanie is actually from Dallas. So we will be talking soon, Stephanie. And the answer to your question is, should I should I spend my money on an advertorial? Um I have been there, done that. I used to have a retail store and almost every month I would have at least four magazines come in and pitch me on an advertorial space. So for those of you that don't know what an advertorial is, it's basically an editorial in a magazine that is an ad. So you pay for the editorial and the the writers will write out, the magazine will write out exactly what you want them to write or to provide the information you want them to provide. But it is an ad. So it will say there there has to be a disclaimer that says, um, you know, this is an advertorial. Now, from my experience, and I'm a big reader too, and I flip through magazines all the time, Stephanie, I will say that I almost always will skip an advertorial because you know that earned uh, media, earned reputation is way more, um, has way more gravity, way more merit than, uh, you know, a paid ad. So instead of an advertorial, this is what I would suggest. Go to the magazines that you, that are in your niche, they have to be in your niche and pitch them a story that really is relevant, fresh and definitely gives out information. So it's educative, it's entertaining, it's um, it's giving out information that is adding value to the readers of that magazine. Now, when you do that, as I mean, that story really has to have a lot of, oomph, you know, it has to be something that I would love to read. Now, if you can go to them and pitch a story, trust me, they will do a feature. Why? Because they're also looking for um, stories to stories that are entertaining, stories that are educative for their audiences, right? So if your uh, your pitch meets those requirements, you're in. So find ways or find magazines where you can pitch it. Yes, it's a little bit more time consuming, but pitch it to them. And what's happening is that they are voluntarily featuring you. So that gives you much more social proof, much more earned proof than putting your money in the advertorial space. Now, also having said that, um, in your space, in a service-based business, email marketing really, really works. You already have a list of your customers. I'm sure you have, uh, you know, a list of your prior customers. Start sending them emails. Um, give them a reason to open those emails, right? So make sure that it's, again, it's all about what you are providing to them, what the content is. The content should be fresh. It's informative. If I have a pet, which I don't, and I don't want to get one, <laughs> I'm not a pet person, but say if I have a pet, there are things that I want to know, you know, what's coming up. Maybe it's summer season and there are some allergies for pets that are coming up. Uh, maybe something is going on around the world that I would like to know about in terms of, you know, for my pets. Um, you know, it's it's so interesting how much you can do with email marketing, especially for a service-based business, because this is where you are in their inbox once a week, you're giving them so much information that they're looking forward to it. And they'll say, that's when they'll, when their friend asks them and says, hey, you know, um, there's something going on. I'm a first time pet owner. There's something wrong with my pet. I don't know what to do. They'll say, call Stephanie. She knows her stuff. So do email marketing. Email marketing is the most important thing, especially for a service-based business. Also, um, I would suggest cross marketing because I'm sure there are a lot of because it is a localized business. So I'm sure there are a lot of other local uh, indirect 
uh, you know, businesses that you can go ahead and do cross marketing with. Don't go with PetSmart and you know the the ones that you would that would come to your mind immediately. Go with something different. Maybe there's a coffee shop that allows pets. So go with them. Find a way to cross market with them. So find new and ingenious kind of ways to put the, to spread the word out to get it out. Once they're in the door, get them in through your email marketing. And of course, in a service based business, service is number one. So your service has to be top notch, but you can do all of these things to really get them going. I know I'm uh, uh, over time, but small business uh, marketing is really near and dear to my heart. So um, sometimes it's okay, right? Okay. So thank you all so much for joining me today. I hope this was helpful and Keep sending me your questions. The information is right down there. Sending, Keep sending me your questions. I love the backstories that y'all are sending me. Um, and actually, I will do an episode with the people that have, I've answered the questions and the stuff that they have used. Um, and it's uh, it's amazing to see it. I am so thankful. I will see you guys next Thursday. Ciao.